So the first thing we can do is label the triangle. Right? Taylor, this isn't that bad, right? Just label the triangle. Hypotenuse. Here's for my angle. This would be the adjacent side. And here is my opposite side. Now, looking at this, all right, you guys can now see that um, I don't have anything for my adjacent, but I have opposite over hypotenuse. So who was helping me out? Josh, do you remember what trigonometric function deals with opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. So I can write sine of x equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. But here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. We don't know what x is. Okay. Now, a couple things. I, you guys are in the really early stages of inverses and so forth, so I don't want to get too detailed into this. But one of my questions that I'd say is, um, Devin, if I was going to solve this, what would be my next step? Right, so how would, I, how would I solve this? What would be my next step? Do you know? What would be my next step? Minus 4, right? He asked me, man. Yeah. What would be? What would be the next one? I hear what you said. Devin, Devin, you're good. What would be the next one? Division. Division, good. All right, now if I have x squared equals 16, what do I do? If you don't know, if I can open up to the gallery. What is my inverse operation? Can we take it out of somebody else? Take it? Huh? That's not division. Kevin? So what's the opposite of squaring? Square root. You take the square root. right? These are what we call inverse operations. The inverse operation of squaring is the square root. So if I had the square root of 5 equal 10, how would I undo the square root of something? Square it. right? Now, so what I want you guys to understand is the inverse operation of squaring, you don't like divide or you don't divide by like the square root sign. Okay, that's not the operation of square rooting. You have to square it. So what I want you guys to understand is we're taking the sine of this angle. It's the sine of the angle. It's not sine times x. So we cannot just divide by x. That's not what we're doing. We need to take the opposite of sine. All right? We need to do the opposite operation of the sine function. Just stop that, please. So what is the opposite, right? It took you guys a while just to figure out what the opposite of x squared was. What the heck is the opposite of sine? Without giving you guys too much information or getting too confusing, the opposite in operation for sine is just what we call sine inverse. OK, and it looks like that. You can go in your calculator, and if you have a scientific calculator, above the sine button should be the sine inverse button. So you're going to want to hit second sine. And then you can just put in parentheses 6 divided by 18, or reduce that to 1 third. And what I get is 19.47. Make sure you're in degree mode. OK, I can show you. I can help you out. Now, the next thing is they're not asking us, though, for x. They're asking us for b. Is it pretty easy, though, to do 19 minus your answer minus 90 degrees? Oh, I'm sorry, crap. 180 minus your answer minus 90. And therefore, I can get this to be 70.53. What's confusing? Everything. What? Which part? Well, Did you understand how to label adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse? Do you understand how I could only use the sine function? Uh, yes. OK. Do you understand how I plugged in the opposite side in for opposite and 18, right? And then I don't know what x is, right? So I, do you understand how I plugged it into this equation? Yes. OK. All I want you to understand is if I said x plus 4 equals 10, you subtract 4, right? To solve for x. So if I have the sine of x, there's no like add, subtract, multiply, divide. You have to take the inverse sine. That is the opposite of sine is the inverse sign. 
Just like the opposite of adding 4 is subtracting 4. The opposite of multiplying by 4 is dividing by 4. The opposite of squaring x is square rooting x. The opposite of sine is inverse sine. So then all you do, you have to have a calculator. All you do is take the inverse of that sign and inverse of 6 over 18, and that's the number you get. That is my angle. Now, if I want to find angle B, I take 180, right? Because all the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So I say 180 minus 19.47 minus 90 degrees equals my angle B. But I could also do this one other way. I'm going to do this really quickly um, for justice. Real quickly, what about if I just wanted to find B directly? Why go through all this weight to find x? What if I just want to find B directly? Well, what information do I have? 6. Is that 6 my opposite side or my adjacent side, Robert? For angle B. They're adjacent. And what is 18? Is that my hypotenuse or my opposite? It's always your hypotenuse, right? So therefore, I can say, um, so since I'm doing adjacent over hypotenuse, cosine of my angle x, which I'm pretending I don't know, is equal to 6 over 18. So therefore, x equals cosine inverse of 6 over 18. Yep, I'll show you in just a second. So then I just do second cosine of parentheses 8, or I'm sorry, 6 divided by 18. And when doing that, I get 70.53. Done. Okay.